Welcome back. It is now law in New York. Police can sue protesters if they are harassed, menaced, or injured during demonstrations. That law has definitely, of course, caused an uproar on social media tonight. And part of that is because of what we've already come to know. It is nearly impossible for anyone to sue police with qualified immunity doctrine in place. Joining me now to talk about it, the civil rights attorney, Tahani Abushi. Um, thanks so much, Tahani, for joining us tonight. You know, this is one that for so many makes them shake their head. Um, we thought police had already so much um, in the way of protection. I want you to talk specifically about this law, though. What does it provide? Thank you so much for having me, Sharon. This is such an important development, and to me, it's quite shocking because what Nassau County has essentially done is made police officers under the guise of first responders a protected class under the human rights law. This essentially gives yeah. this profession, the only profession ever codified under the human rights law, protection as if it's a fundamental human trait like race, gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation. Um, and it further provides protection, like you said, for um, police officers when we can't even hold them accountable. And what this does is it bypasses already all of the criminal and civil laws um, that officers and other first re responders can use to hold people accountable who injure them and instead make it essentially an automatic right. And this will allow officers to now come after civilians um, without even needing to prove intent or going through any of the administrative steps that everyone else under this law has to go through. Yeah, and, and you, when you talk about the lawsuit um, that this could spur on, a police officer who's injured, okay, that's one thing, but harassing, menacing. I mean, we've seen protesters, which this is America, right? Freedom of speech, a yelling in the faces yes. of police officers. We've also seen police officers doing that right, to some demonstrators. So talk about just how loose this seems. This is 100% uh, protection for police officers and retaliation against protesters. One of the dangerous terms in the bill is that if an officer or a first responder is in uniform, there's an irrebuttable presumption that any attack they suffered was because of that uniform. Now, anyone else who is suing under this law has to establish intent, right? That they were discriminated based upon their race, their religion, and, and anything else that's mm -hmm. uh, protected. Um, but officers don't. If you're wearing that uniform, you can allege someone harassed you, injured you, or attacked you because you were in that uniform. Um, and obviously, that's dangerous. Police officers have a lot of protection, like you mentioned, because of qualified immunity, because they're acting under the color of law. Um, and so that allows them to do on to civilians and protesters as they please. Um, and then they can have the added protection to cover it up now with a civil lawsuit mm -hmm. that can range from anywhere from 25000 to $50,000 without having to go through the normal course of litigation and the burden of proof like everyone else does. Yeah, and what's particularly galling here is that so many of these demonstrations were uh, protesting the police and the uniform, and to then weaponize that, um, it, it seems somewhat ridiculous. Do you think it's payback? Is it payback for George Floyd to protest over the summer, the backlash um, against police, bad policing, disrespectful policing, police killings? Absolutely. In the preamble of the bill, it actually states that this bill was inspired as a result of the protest uh, since last May. And we know that was spurred by the murder uh, of George Floyd by police. And um, it's very convoluted and it mixes rioting with protesting. Um, it has this very weird allegiance to police in a way that I've never seen. Um, police are essential to civility, essential to the function of society, essential to the survival of society. Um, uh, pretty, pretty big terms being used in there as if they're kind of um, um, an endangered species. And from that, it's, yeah. we have to protect police at all costs and send a very strong message that we are pro-police and we will protect police even at the expense of civilians and their rights. Yeah, the protected class that you, that you spoke of a short time ago, that is particularly something ACLU, other organizations are zeroing in on. Um, 
Right. Those organizations, though, see these laws as not just dangerous, but an infringement on free speech. Explain that. Absolutely. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, you have the right to speak your mind, to assemble, to protest. Um, you can question police officers. You can ask why you are stopped or why you're being arrested, why someone else you're with is being stopped uh, or arrested. Um, you can talk back. Um, and in the criminal side of things, oftentimes we see that show up in um, charges such as disorderly conduct, obstructing governmental administration, things that usually either get dismissed or result in fines and fees. So essentially goes away. But now it gives police officers an opportunity to more, do more than that and say, now we're going to sue you for comments that we deem harassment, right? That we deem a problem to us. So if you are protesting police brutality, if you're protesting excessive force, if you're pushing for police accountability and transparency and officers feel harassed by it, um, they, that opens the door for a lawsuit against you for speaking your mind. Yeah, so anybody who, who's down in Georgia who thought, you know, getting smacked uh, for voter suppression laws, these new laws that have been passed, and you can't get a bottle of water while you're standing in one of these lengthy lines was one thing. This seems to take it to a whole nother level once again. Tahani Abushi, civil rights attorney, thanks so much for being here tonight. We appreciate it very much.